Tridip Bhattacharya is CIO of equities at Edelweiss Mutual Fund. He is now joining us. Tridip, hi, good afternoon. What a strong Tridip market. Uh, what is this market sensing? I mean, it's just ignoring uh, the global risk of. And it's not just that, you know, we are falling less than global. I mean, we are not even falling, we are rising and uh, at a very fast pace. Absolutely. I think in the very near term, uh, uh, the, the market is probably rejoicing the fact that the oil has corrected, uh, corrected a good bit in the last few sessions. But I think more generally, uh, if you look at over the last uh, th three or three odd months, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're sitting on a 15% plus rally on the back of a weak global backdrop. So, um, so I think there is in general appreciation of the fact that the local micro is looking a lot better than the global macro and relative to the other regional peers the uh, the uh, by the cheap market hasn't really worked uh, it's basically wherever the earnings have been more resilient is where the markets are more resilient that way so i think you know uh, uh, yes i agree with you that in some of the pockets while global weakness is not being fully appreciated uh, the local uh, the domestic cyclicals uh, 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 part of the indian economy which is the dominant part um, is doing well and in my opinion will continue to do well on a relative basis for sure right uh, hi Tridip. Uh, you know uh, the domestic economy seems hi. to be recovery and in fact, the banking names are doing very, very well. I'm just going through your portfolio construct. You have it. Uh, you know, have a mix of both the larger names, you know, like the ICICI banks, HDFCs of the world, and also smaller names. Whether it's a federal bank, which in fact has been in focus, do you think there is a wave of consolidation that could take place? Uh, you know, in the banking space, as it is, credit growth is good. Burst of asset quality seems to be behind. But what did your comment on this? So I think we are in probably the early stages of uh, uh, a capex cycle where um, the the capex related lending is probably yet to come in. I think when that comes in, probably kind of it'll in all earnest it'll probably be next fiscal year. Uh, but as it starts to show, you will really see some of these banking share prices kind of you know do well in my opinion as compared to what they should at the moment. They are the only place in the market where you see absolute value as well. So clearly, we are meaningfully overweight. Uh, 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 you know, uh, the lending financials, particularly uh, as part of the market, uh, and we expect it to do well. With regards to consolidation, my sense is that at the moment, come the lot of consolidation has already happened. From here on, you might see a little bit more of broad-based growth, more broad-based credit growth from where it is over the next one to two years. And uh, whether it is larger banks or the smaller banks, all of them will see uh, uh, some uh, some bit of this demand flow through them. Uh, we hope to own, obviously, the best of them, which is what you uh, said is there and there or in the portfolio. Okay, the Nifty is now trading above 17,800. Why that is important is because 17,800 remains the area where you have the highest calls. Remember, the last stop for the market was 17,800. And today, despite the market's rally, 17,800 call premium is actually down even now. And that's because, you know, uh, uh, this amount of open interest over there is 1.32 crore shares. Uh, that's just massive. Uh, 16 rupees premium right now, 14 rupees. I, I mean, I don't know if uh, that will be taken out maybe you never know but for now 17 uh, 800 is almost here on the on the nifty uh, so uh, uh, in the broader market what are the themes that you are backing now and uh, the kind of money that you get uh, what what kind of stocks are you adding so basically, uh, we think in the near term, the market is more a relative value market, but we are constructive on equity markets from a two to three year perspective. And the areas that we are bullish on uh, are number one, we, uh, uh, we are biased for a rebound in credit growth, which is what I talked about. Um, and this would be driven by a private sector investment demand. So we are uh, overweight industrials, capital goods uh, in a meaningful way in our portfolio. Uh, we are also overweight uh, direct and indirect plays on uh, 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 household capex, which is the real estate part. We think that uh, we are in the somewhere in the first two to three years of a seven-year real estate cycle, and they would uh, they should stand to benefit. And off late, we have turned a little more positive on consumer companies where we think uh, there is pricing power coming through. Because as we go through the back half of the year, we think that uh, some of this commodity inflation as it pulls away uh, might mean a bit of tailwind for these companies as opposed to headwinds that they have been facing for the last six, nine months. Mm. So they what about the pharma space? You know, no one's talking about it. It doesn't seem to be a hot sector any longer. In your portfolio, you have a few of them. You have Sun Pharma, I think, Gland Pharma, there's JB Chemicals as well. Among the few names, uh, you know, that I could spot, 
Uh, your view on this space out here and how would you approach it? The worst of pricing in the United States, is it behind? Uh, you know, uh, g give us your sense. My sense is that broadly pharma is uh, kind of, you know, uh, stocks exposed to the U.S. and domestic. And within that, within that uh, the U.S. exposed pharma players have not really seen the bottom. In other words, uh, aligning with the U.S. weakness, there might be some more weakness in the prices in U.S. exposed stocks overall from a pharma perspective. From a domestic pharma's uh, uh, names per point of view, we are selectively positive on some names. Um, uh, and and that's what we are overweight on. On net balance, we'll probably be neutralish on the sector, uh, with more oriented towards domestic rather than the U.S. plays uh, is what I would kind of you know point to you at the moment. Mm, okay, that's on pharma. What about midcap IT, Tridip? Uh, uh, that is an area where the market's now a bit concerned about whether you know uh, there will be a lot of margin pressure from this quarter on, and whether there will be more valuation reset. Great question. I would actually be less worried on margins. I would be more worried on what they say on the top line, if you really ask me. I think the margin worry has well played out and well understood uh, over the last two or three quarters that what we have seen. I think the street in general is waiting to hear that what happens to Indian companies' revenue growth for this year or maybe further out, as some of the U.S. companies have kind of, you know, started profit warning over the last month or so. And in that context, Accenture results would probably be a bellwether for, uh, uh, in general, for the sector, particularly in mid-cap IT, because mid-cap IT it, uh, it used to be the place which used to give the growth proxy in the context of the IT uh, services per se. So on net balance, we are actually um, not so positive on mid-cap IT as yet, even though the markets have, uh, even though the stocks have corrected, because we think that the revenue weakness is yet to be fully priced in um, with regards to expectations in general. Okay, all right. Uh, Tridhi, what about the cement space? <laughs> you know, that's, uh, I don't know, these stocks are just moving in one direction. Uh, the recovery I get, the larger names will do pretty well. The problem is that, you know, some of these smaller names, the mid-cap companies, they may not ultimately get acquired, which in that case, it could be putting investors in a bit of a spot. How do you approach this Absol thing? Absolutely, well spotted. I would say that we are selective in this. So we are, as you said, that we are overweight on some of the larger names, which would benefit, even though there is a new entrant in the uh, in the sector who might just to make his presence felt get a little aggressive um, this way, that way. And if it were to happen, then clearly the smaller names might be in a spot of bother. Um, hence, we prefer at the moment uh, the larger pan-India plays and relative pockets wherever we see kind of, you know, less capacity and more pricing uh, discipline coming through. So we are approaching this with a bit of... Uh, uh, with a bit of uh, selectiveness, uh, selectivity in, uh, uh, in our mind. And we think that uh, we will continue to remain that way. It's unlikely to change, uh, given that the sectoral dynamics from new, and, uh, new player entry and uh, how that will behave is not yet clear. Um, clearly, the stocks have not done well, and hence a little bit of euphoria, some good news keeps, uh, makes the stock buoyant from a very near-term standpoint. But I think over a period of time, um, at some levels, again, the sector-related uh, uh, worries like uh, the new entrant and what they will do to the pricing discipline uh, will emanate. Um, and hence, we are selective in this space. Okay, selective in the space. Uh, uh, Tradeep, so to your mind now, what is the big risk to this market? Do you think uh, this market could just make uh, new all-time highs pretty soon and make much higher highs? Or uh, is this a market where you would be a bit cautious now on margin? I would say that the risk to the margin lies actually from a negative headline outside of India. So any tension potentially on China, Taiwan could potentially be uh, something that the, the market is yet to uh, factor it in. Um, likewise, a bigger sort of rate hike than anticipated in the United States could also spell a bit of a correction. But I would say that those kind of fears are there or there about China, Taiwan could be an incremental place to uh, uh, be worried about. I think as we go towards the end of the year, the festive demand and the fact that this will be the first year where uh, there is no COVID or you know people are out, out in the open uh, 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 to the extent that they can uh, will lead to certain uh, resilience in certain part, certain part pockets of the economy. And hence the domestic bottom-up data would be positive. Um, the worry could be that uh, if the gas prices uh, uh, or for that matter, any tensions on the geopolitics side um, keeps us down. So, um, you know, given, given basically strong bottom up 
and weak uh, uh, macro, um, that is where I think a bit of complacency might step in. But I would use that weakness to get in. I think from the next three to five year perspective, you will see the India domestic story. Uh, India economic recovery story and Indian market story being particularly strong uh, wouldn't bet against that. Okay, Tridip, always good hearing your thoughts. Thanks so much for stopping by and filling us in uh, with your views on a whole host of uh, sectors that we just discussed. Wishing you a Thank good you. evening uh, ahead.